Hey, good morning, Redeemers. Oh, welcome to 2022, right? You're in the right place at the right time. We are going to spend some time praying this morning. Um, I don't know how you came into church this morning. If you came in here and things are, gonna go, are, are going great, you're in a time of celebration, things are probably going to get hard. If you came in here and things are really hard this morning, things are going to get better. This is the roller coaster of life. And when I'm on my ups and downs, the first thing that goes out the window sometimes is prayer. And we're going to spend some time praying in this new year. We've done this a couple times, but I invite you this morning that wherever you're at, when you come before God, as we come before God this morning, we come to God in, in praise for what he's doing. Even those circumstances that we are not sure where they're going or how we're going to get through them, that we praise God that we get to have him by our side, that he is with us as we go through those things. So we're going to spend some time praising him. Right now, the praise team is going to, to sing and we're going to praise Psalms 95, 1 and 2 says, Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. And we're going to start this day out that way. So let's praise God together as a family. Amen? sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing, now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open, cause when you call me You call my name, and I 
can be seated. Good morning, Redeemers. What a great way to start the new year. Um, I want to say a warm welcome to everyone, and especially if you're a new guest. Uh, we have something called a communication card that you can find under the seat in front of you. If you fill that out and drop it off at the info center, which is the gazebo out in the quad area, you'll get a free gift. And um, this is just our way to show our appreciation that you're here today because we're so glad that you um, have chosen to visit us this morning. Um, we don't have an official time of offering here at Redeemers. Uh, we want you to give at your convenience and however you feel led to do that, so no pressure. Um, but you can do that a few ways. You can give online at RedeemersChurch.com. Um, there um, but there's a button up at the top for you to give there. Or if you want to give um, cash or a check, there's an offering receptacle located by the front doors um, where you entered. So feel free to give um, after service if that's what you feel like um, you're led to do. Um, we have a few exciting opportunities for the ladies to get connected this year. Actually, we start a Bible study today. So if you have not signed up, it's not too late. You can still do that. We're meeting right after this service in room two, which is right in the education building. You can just come out. It'll be a quick check-in to go over what the Bible study is. And what, essentially what that is, is we're committing to reading the word every day this year. Um, we'll be supporting each other, coming together once a month to check in to see what we're learning, how we're doing. Um, I've never completed the Bible in a year, so I know it'll, I'm excited to do that. Um, it's seems daunting and scary, but we'll be there to encourage each other and, and learn together. So that's one opportunity. The next one is on January 13th. Um, we're going to do a faith and fitness group for women. Um, yeah, I'm excited for that. And Naomi's leading it, Custodio. We're going to meet in here. We're going to work out for the first half. And then we're going through a book together that we'll be reading on our own. And then we'll be discussing that the second part of the group. So Every fit, fitness level is invited. Every age of, is invited. We'll be customizing the workouts based on those sorts of things. So if you would like to do that, you can sign up at RedeemersChurch.com slash hub, or you can sign up at the Info Center after church. Um, lastly, uh, we have this beautiful display of Christmas decorations that we are taking down this week. So if anyone has some extra time this week, if you'd like to serve and help us organize and put things away, you can see me after church. No, we cannot do that. <laughs> uh, all right, so thank you again. We're glad that you're here. And now Matt will be up. Hey, good morning, everybody. Again, I don't know why. This is how I'm going to lead out or start this out. I don't know why I get so nervous on a Sunday morning. And yet, you know, I do this thing called Wellness Mondays on Mondays, Celebrate Recovery, that I've been doing for a long time. I don't get nervous for that. I'm like relaxed and I get to talk. My thoughts are with me. I'm flowing. And yet on a Sunday morning, I'm just like incoherent and babbling and I feel like I'm stuttering around. So I'm going to pretend right now that it's Monday. And it's nighttime. <laughs> I seem to do better at the end of the day sometimes with my thoughts than I do in the morning. So, um, but welcome. I mean, this is, I don't know why I get to lead out 2022. I, I, had, I did this, you know, we missed one year of doing this. We did it, I think we did it 2018, 19. We missed 2020, obviously, going into 21 because of this pandemic thing that's going on. Look how that year went. We missed a year of prayer, and this is how 2021 started out. So uh, we're, gonna, we're doing it again. I am, I'm so happy to be able to do this, though, on a Sunday morning, and, and, and we're doing the right thing, right? The first things we should do, a lot of times, like I said, when, when things are going, well, actually, when things are going really great, still my prayer life seems to be th disappear. When things are going hard... Again, the first thing that I have to go to is complaints and uh, trying to fix it my own way, do things on my own power, not go to prayer. Prayer should be that first thing that we go to every single time. There's other things to go to after that, maybe with God's guidance, but the first place we start all the time is with prayer. And so we, we, we got those cards that we handed out at the, at the beginning as you walked in. 
and they have that pray acrostic. And I'm using it. We used it last time because it, it has the order. I mean, how often do we just come, to, come before God at, or, or pray when we need it? Say, God, I need you to do this for me. I need you in my life because this is going on, right? And we miss some of the steps. I mean, good, good direction from the Bible. Biblical direction. This is a good thing. And uh, so this morning we started out with praise. And, I, and, and so we want to continue on that. The first thing that we come to when we come to before God is, is with praise. And we, we worshiped him together. The second part of that is in 1 Thessalonians 5 where it says to pray continually and give thanks in all circumstances. And that is an easy verse to say and a hard one to get into your life. Praise in all circumstances. So I don't know, like I said, when you come in this morning, if you're coming in from a, a time of celebration and everything's going great and you're just looking forward to 2022, or if you're coming in from a place where things are not going as well as you would, as, as you would like them to, things are difficult, and you don't know how you're going to make it through another year. In both of those circumstances, we come before God gratefully and say, God, thank you. If for nothing else, thank you that I don't have to do this on my own power, that I can rely on you in my life. God, thank you for being part of it. So I, 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 we're going to pray here in a little bit, but I'm, I'm going to ask you, I, I'll start out and then in each of these times of prayer, I'll start out and then leave a little bit of space for you guys to pray. Um, this one, I mean, we want to pray from a personal spot and then we want to go out and, and go all the way out to outside these walls, into the community, and we're going to pray for everything this morning. But this morning, I want to start inside. Like, what are you thankful for this morning? If you can't think of anything, that's okay. You know, in Ce Celebrate Recovery, Wellness Monday, 6.30, every Monday night. Tomorrow night is meal night. It starts at 6.30. You're invited. Um, we have this thing called the gratitude list. When things are going really great, I'm asking people to put, write down a gratitude list when things are going well because there are days when I sit down and I don't know of anything going well in my life. I'm like, I'm grateful for nothing. That's not true. I am grateful for stuff, but I can't think of it all the time. So I make a gratitude list. And when I'm having those rough days, I look at that and remind myself, let God remind me of what's going well or what can I be thankful for. Because we think that this attitude of gratitude is something that's just natural. Oh, I, now I have, I have the Holy Spirit. I'll be fine. I'm always going to be grateful. No, that's not the way it is. We have to cultivate it. We have to work on that attitude. So I'm asking this morning, we're going to sit just for a little bit. We're going to pray, God, what? I, I am so thankful for this. We're going to praise God with our gratitude, right? So that's the way it's, we're going to start out. Um, some soft music will play in the background. But let me pray, and then we'll just have a couple minutes of, uh, of just kind of praying to ourselves or praying to God just by ourselves. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much. If for nothing else, thank you so much that you are part of our lives. Because of the season that we just celebrated, thank you for your son that you sent to earth. The reason that we get to actually pray to you and come before you. Thank you for Jesus. And thank you so much that even when things are dark, that we have you to, to uh, guide us. You've put people in our, in, as a church family, you've put people in our lives to be a support system for us. God, I thank you so much that... Um, we have those important people in our lives. Thank you so much for a place that we can come. We can worship you and praise you on a Sunday morning. I just pray for those, the, the, the rest of the year that those, those grateful things, the things that we're grateful for, would be apparent and stay in the forefront of our mind instead of uh, getting lost in the mix. God, thank you, and we continue praying. Pray for those things in your life that are personal, like the, the things that you are grateful for.
Dear God, thank you so much that we get to come before you. Thank you for being who, who you are. Dear God, we praise you for those things that, that uh, you're doing in our lives, the circumstances even that we are out of, that we are not in control of those things. We praise you because we are not in control of those things, that you are in control and that we can, we can rely on you, that you are faithful. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Two minutes of silence is a long time. I don't even know if that was two minutes. It just seemed like it. Did you guys think of something? At least while you were praying, things of, uh, look to your neighbor and tell them one thing that you're grateful for. You just prayed about it, so you can probably remember. That is a good sign that everybody is actually has something in there. Did you think of something? <laughs> the next thing that we come before, when we come before God, the next thing is, is that repentance piece. And that repentance piece could be a, a scary thing because it sounds so daunting, repentance. You know, and it's just really <clears throat> turning away from one thing and turning towards another. A lot of times that we, we might turn away or we might turn towards, but we turn away from the sins that we have committed or those things that are dragging us down. But see, a lot of times we don't replace it. A lot of times when we turn away from something, we don't replace it with something. We just stare at the wall, I guess. Like, I'm not going to do that anymore. And then I stare at the wall. Like, I got to keep my mind off of that. You don't keep your mind off. That's not the way you fix those struggles. The way you fix those struggles is you replace them with something. And this, in this case, we turn away from whatever is pulling us down, and we turn towards the one that can actually save us from those struggles. We put our mind on, our eyes on Jesus. So to, to, to true repentance is to turn away from those things and turn towards Jesus. Ezekiel 18.30 says, repent, turn away from all your offenses, then sin will not be your downfall. Rid yourselves of all your offenses you have committed and get a new heart and a new spirit. We keep turning away, but we got the old heart and we got the old spirit. It's not until we look to Jesus that we get the new heart and the new spirit. You know, we have, we have those tough things that are going on in our life. I mean, the struggles, the compulsive behaviors, the addictions, the unforgiveness. See, this is what seems, this is, it does sound like a Monday night now all of a sudden, right? The Bible says, forgive and you will be forgiven. See, Jesus' prayer is that we ask for forgiveness in the same way that we forgive others. We forgive those that have offended us. And that we're holding a resentment. Maybe you're, are you holding on to resentment this morning? That is a sure way to hinder your growth with your, in your relationship with Jesus. And we all do it. I mean, maybe I'm the only one. I'm holding on to some resentment sometimes. And that's, I can't be the only one. Huh? I am the only one? Oh, no, Greg. <laughs> it seems, so, or maybe we just aren't trusting God and it's what he says he'll do. It seems that the harder things get, we try to face it on our own power, but you know we don't have to. That's the praise. We don't have to do these things on our own. I ask, this, ask you to come to a place this morning when you turn away from those things and turn towards accepting God's help in your life. So right now we're going to pray. And this is the foundation. This, this is not like I'm such a terrible person because I'm doing these things. This is God is such a great and loving God because he loves me anyways. And he wants to be part of my life anyways. This is not self-loathing. This is a God-loving thing. Re this is the foundation of what? This is, coming, this is the foundation of coming before God. We praise and we repent. That's how it all starts. We skip those two steps and then it's not... It's not the way the Bible says to come before God. We're doing it this way. All we have to do is confess and turn away, and through him we have the power to overcome whatever is holding us back. Mark says, turn from your sins and act on this glorious news, the glorious news of the season that we just celebrated. Jesus is born. He has come to earth. He came to earth to make a way so that we could come before God in this way. Amen? 
We're no longer slaves to an old sinful nature. He has given us a way to be made right. And that, if nothing else, is a reason to praise. And that, if nothing else, is the thing that gets into our heart, that the Holy Spirit moves inside our heart and causes us to turn away. It makes us able to turn away from those other things and turn towards him. Right? It's only through him that we get to do that. So I'm going to invite you to pray. This is, a, this is an uncomfortable one. It's still by yourselves. It's still quietly. Uh, but asking God, what is, what's in my life? What's hindering my relationship with you? What is it that I need to get out of the way so I can truly come before you and grow my relationship? I asked you, I mean, I should have said on those cards, you could write down the praise part. If you feel comfortable, you can write down this part too. Like, what is that one thing? And if you don't feel comfortable writing that down, use a code, something to remind you. Maybe you don't want people finding the paper. <laughs> they, they'll find out something about you. <laughs> Probably they already know. It's your, you're the only one that has to come to grips with it. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm going to ask again. I'm going to pray a little bit, and then I'm going to ask you guys to pray quietly, um, and then I'll close it again. So pray with me. Oh, dear God. Again, we praise you for who you are. God, in light of who you are and what you have done, God, we ask you to enter our lives. We ask you that we, we thank you that we can come before you, but there are things in our lives, in all of our lives, that hinder us from truly knowing you, from truly building a relationship with you, from going deeper to where you want us to be, to know that life, fulfilled life that you want us to have. God, I ask that you would reveal those things, that you would make those things clear. Maybe they sometimes are hiding or the things that we don't want to admit, the things that we want to just push down. God, I ask that you, we, would, we would face those things, that we would give them to you, that we would lay them down, that we would come before you and say, God, I, I'm laying this at your feet. God, I've done it, tried to do this all by myself. I've tried to do what... I've tried to do this on my own power, get through these struggles, get through the compulsive behavior, get through this unforgiveness, but it's only through you that we can know true freedom. God, I want to lay those things down this morning. God, thank you so much that you take those things that we lay at your feet, that we lay them down, and you take them and you forget them. You come into our lives, and what we thought was impossible, the stuff that we thought we couldn't get through, that you come in and you, you remove those things. Sometimes it's not as easy as just saying the words that you remove those things, but God, you make a way for us to, to, for those things to be removed. 
Father God, we turn away from those things. We turn towards you because you are our Savior. You are our God. We seek you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't know about you, but so I've been, uh, I have been practicing these quiet times. I find that in my prayer life, I do a lot of talking, <laughs> and I don't do a lot of sitting and being quiet. And so when we talk about, um, I mean, we do it as a staff. We talk about how things are going. We have our, these check-ins, and sometimes the check-ins are very quick, <laughs> and sometimes we talk a lot, but we share what's going on in our lives, and we, and, and, and we, and we talk about, well, what is God revealing to you, you know? When I talk, God has very little space to reveal things to me because I got to go. I'm done talking. Now I got to go. That, that's, that relationships don't work that way. I mean, I, I, do you, I don't know if you struggle with this in a maybe an a important relationship in your life. I'm thinking of my significant other, my wife, that if I wake up in the morning, and don't, Sunshine, don't say if I do actually do this. I might do it. I don't know. But... If I wake up in the morning and I give her my list of things that I'm doing, like, hey, I've got all this stuff going on. I need you to do this stuff. I need this stuff from the store. I got to go. And I don't allow space for her to talk. <laughs> That's not much of a relationship, is it? That's actually no relationship at all. And I think God doesn't get tired of it. He, long, he wants, but our people get tired of it very quickly. And so we need to allow that space. And I don't know about you. I was just thinking about it while I was supposed to be praying, I was thinking about it, but <laughs> that I really enjoy those, those moments of quiet, those moments of silence. How much silence have you had over this past Christmas break or this past the New Year's time? I mean, it seems that things get busier and there's just not time to sit and just be still before God. It sounds good to be for the silence. I don't know if the silence is ringing in your ears and you can't stand it, but I, I, I'm starting to enjoy it. There's a time when I can't stand it either. I can't stand my thoughts. But I'm growing to enjoy it more and more and more, and God is revealing himself through that time. So after we, I don't know, maybe you don't feel the same. <laughs> you might. If you fell asleep in two minutes, you need, some, you need to go home and go to bed after this. Um, after we praise God, after we recognize that we need him and we need his love and we need his forgiveness, he wants us to rely on him. He wants us to come before him with our requests like a kid to a parent. Our father knows what we need, but he wants us to ask. I mean, I know what my kids need a lot of times, but I want them to talk and I want them to ask me for those things. He wants us to come before him with the things we need. In Philippians 4, 6, we are told, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And so we're going to spend some time this morning praying for each other, with our families, um, and our friends. If silence makes you uncomfortable, I don't know. I get more uncomfortable when Nick's up here asking me to get into groups, pray together in groups. I'm like, maybe I got something to do. I'm going to have to head out right now. Don't leave. If you're caught leaving, we'll write your name down. All of you have a gold star for being here on the first Sunday of the year, so don't waste it on trying to get out of here right now. Um, we're going to pray first in our families. If you have come here by yourself, you don't have family members around you, um, Find a group. Look to your left or to your right and find somebody. Join in. This is one big church family, right? So we're going to pray together. Uh, this may be, uh, like I said, a little uncomfortable. Prayer in groups often is, but this is a great way to start. And getting uncomfortable is what? This is our motto at Redeemers, and we're going to continue that. This isn't the year, 2022, the year to get comfortable. You're not in the right place. This is a year to stay uncomfortable and keep going, right? Uh, I am willing to, so I am uncomfortable I don't like praying in front of people. I always feel like I do it wrong. It's okay. <laughs> I'm going to pray anyways. I'm going to let God do what he wants, and I'm going to accept the fact that, hey, you got, you're going to go up there and lead a prayer meeting. Okay. Um, and I encourage you to go with it and pray also. As much as our relationship is personal, this is we are meant to be in community with one another. We're meant to follow Jesus together. 
This is why we're all in this room at the same time, at the same place, because we are meant to do this together. So we may be sitting with our families if, or, or, like I said, with somebody else or get, get into groups. Praise God for those people. Not, not just ask, your st- ask those things, but first praise God for the, the people that you're sitting with. Um, and then come before God with your requests. In these groups, um, and then maybe during that time, maybe you know somebody that needs, also needs prayer, your relationships. We've got on the screen, uh, pray, for your, pray for family. What's the next slide? There you go. <laughs> pray for your family. I can't see the back screen. This is 2022, the year to actually wear my glasses. Pray for your family. Thank God for your family. Ask God to be part of your family this year and pray for the relationships in your life. Maybe you know somebody that needs prayer. Pray for them. If you don't know what to pray for them, mention their name. God knows what we need. He just would like us to ask. So I'm going to leave a couple minutes to pray. I'm going to start out. I'm going to go pray with my family, and I'm going to leave a little bit of time for you guys to pray. Dear God, thank you so much for the people that we... um, are born to, (laughs) the families that you have given us, the families that you have uh, allowed us to be a part of, even if those families are not the easiest to get along with all the time, God, I I thank you for them, and and I pray that you would be part of the family. God, allow us to pray right now and ask you for those things we need. Dear God, thank you so much again for the groups of people who, oh, well, you can keep praying, Greg. (laughs) This is good. See, we're not done. This is the kind of prayer lives that we're looking for, right? We're not done praying. Dear God, thank you so much. You're going to keep praying. Dear God, thank you so much that we get to pray together as groups, that you are part of these groups, that you are here right now, that your presence is part of this church. Dear God, I pray for our families and our close relationships this this year, even those relationships that you want to start this year, the people that you want us to get to know better or that we you want us to speak to about you. God, I pray for you to be part of every facet of our lives, and with those closer to close to us, I just pray that we grow closer to you together over the next year. Amen. We're still we're going to keep praying, and we're going to. I'm still still enjoying that that comment. Of we're not done. I'm going to use that this 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 year. I'm not done. I'm still praying. We're going to continue out as we go. We've got these groups. We're going to try to expand those a little bit. If you see a group off to the side, I encourage you, if you feel comfortable, if you don't feel comfortable, depending on the reason, do it anyways. (laughs) But we're going to pray. First, we're going to pray for uh, our church. And we have some stuff on on the screen for... uh, for the church, for, the, for praying for the church. We're going to pray that God is part of our church in this next year, right? We're praying for those things. I, I, I'm going to stay up here, I think. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to maybe prompt a little bit, or I'm just going to ask that you guys go through those. Maybe I'll just let you guys are praying really good. So <laughs> maybe I'll just, the, those are the things I thought of. Maybe I left something off. I don't know. Um, if you think of something else that is connected to the church, I encourage you to pray for it. I'm going to start off uh, the praying. We, we uh, you know, because although we start off the prayer as personal choice, like I said, we are a community of believers that are growing in our relationship with Jesus together. We are here in this place to support one another, pray for each other, come together so we can live together whole and healed, right? That is what this whole thing is about. That's what church is for 
some aspect of church. Church is for a lot of things, but that's one of them. So I'm going to start praying this thing, and we're going to just ask that God is part of this, what we do as a church in this place. So pray with me, and then I'll leave some time after that for you guys to pray in groups. Dear God, thank you so much that you are part of this church. I ask that um, you continue to be, that the stuff that we do is, is, is blessed by you. If it is not from you, I ask that you remove those things. But God, we have a list of things here. The first thing, dear God, we pray for, for uh, all the leaders of this church, especially for Pastor Nick. Dear God, we don't know what's all going on, but we do know um, that he loves you. Dear God, I don't know how to pray exactly for people all the time. I just ask that you're part of the situation, that you're part of the circumstances, that you're part of um, the guidance for anybody that's involved, for the doctors or whatever. And I just ask that you would bless that, that you guide those people, that you're with them, that he feels your presence. Dear God, I thank you so much for the leadership of this church. I'm not including myself in that, although I get to be a leader sometimes. But dear God, I pray and thank you for the people that were here before I got here, the people that have been part of this church for a long time, the people that are still part of it that lead me on a weekly basis. Dear God, thank you for a family of believers that, that loves on people, that wants to be a part of people's lives, that is there for support. God, we pray for all of the, the uh, programs that we do, but we pray for that, that you use those programs to enter into people's lives, to introduce them to you, to grow relationships with them. Keep praying in your groups. <laughs> Dear God, thank you so much that we get to come before you and pray for the things in, this, in, in the church. Um, thank you that we are praying for the things in the church. Dear God, thank you that uh, we have these things going on. We ask that every single one of those be used by you this year, that you, you speak to people um, in this church through those things this year, and that we come together in this new year to seek you. Um, amen. Um, seek you and seek you in, it, seek God and, and take him out into the community that is the, the next thing that we're going to ask for that we have things that we're doing in the community and I mean um, it doesn't stop just with our church uh, and, and, I mean we want to grow too but we also I mean the mission of Jesus is that we come together that we grow in our relationships and that we carry that good news out to those people on the outside of this church right the people that are surrounding, that they see us. And we do that in, in all kinds of good ways. I, I think about, you know, this is part of being a church family is the prayer part. We do a lot of the great stuff. Like, uh, well, this is great too. <laughs> but we do a lot of stuff. Like we have the trunk or treat. And we have awesome events going on during the year that we also use to become part of a church family or to grow closer as a church family. But this is one of the most important things. How often do we sit with our families and pray? I don't do it enough. Most of the time, if at all, probably. I got other people to pray with, not necessarily my family. So it's awesome to, to be sitting and being able to do that this morning. So we're going to pray through this, uh, this uh, just a little bit, through the praying for the community. Those are the things up there. Also, just anything else that you can think of. Let me start out just a couple minutes. We're going to pray real quick through this one. Um, and then we'll go on and we'll close. But, dear God, thank you so much that we get to be a place, that we get to be a place of hope in the community. I, I ask that we would continue to be that, 
that we are that for people, that they see our, this church or they're passing through this church going to the college or they're passing through this church cutting through the campus to get back to their houses or down to the street. And, and that they, when they pass through, that they, they, they feel you here, that this is a place that they, they, they just feel comfortable, even sitting out in the middle of the week um, on tables or skateboarding around on the sidewalk, that they feel comfortable that this is an accepting place no matter what. And God, I just, I pray that we continue to be that. We pray for the services like Sir Reedley and the Faith House. Um, God, that we can serve people's needs in the community. That you continue to bring us those people. That that Faith House, that the Faith House is a safe place for people to go to in a time of trouble. That it continues to... Uh, I mean, take them in and then find, find places, find services, find stability. Just continue praying. Just pray through some of those things on that list. Dear God, thank you so much that we get to be a place of acceptance and love and showing people. We ask that those people that come here for, those, uh, for the events and everything, that it's not just a fun time, but we get to introduce them to you, um, that we get to, to be part of their lives, that they, they get to know us through those things and get to know you through us. Thank you for putting us in this, on this corner. <laughs> And the people that we might be able to reach, help us to reach them. In Jesus' name, amen. So the last part of that thing, as we close, is the yield part. That is a part of asking that God does use us. And as with any, so the prayer part, like I said, the prayer part is like I'm talking. But then the other part is where we're listening to what God wants to do. The yielding of, God, this is what we're praying, and we don't know how you're going to answer, but we trust that you know what's best for us. And beyond that, we trust that God wants what's best for us, that he loves us, and he wants to guide us, and he cares for us, right? It's one thing to say that God answers prayers, and whatever he says is right, but do we trust that what he says and what he does and what he, how he answers is the right answer because he loves us. That's the part where we yield to him. We yield to him as a church where we say, God, these are all the things that we've got planned for the year. But what do you have planned for the year? We have all these events. What events do you want to use? We have all these services, the stuff that's on the screen even. How do you want to use the faith house? I know how we want to use it. How do you want to use it? I know how you want to use uh, the Ramates. <laughs> Ramate? <laughs> huh? Remate. There you go. I know how you want to use, how, how we want to use that. We know what we have plans, but what are your plans for it? God, I know how I want you to answer my prayers for health and wellness and uh, work and family and all of those things. How do you want to answer it? And whatever that answer is, God, I trust you because I know that you love me and that you're caring for me as a father cares for kids. And not a father like, the, like I'm a father even, <laughs> but a good and perfect father one who has the right answers every single time, who does, isn't preoccupied with anything else, but is occupied with, by, with us, with, our good, with what's going on in our lives. He cares what's going on. And in, re, and in response, or not even response to that, but the response that God is who he is, 
When we get that realization, God asks us for this in Romans 12, 1, or in, he didn't, in response to that, our response should be Romans 12, 1. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday ordinary life, you're sleeping, you're eating, you're going to work and walking around life, place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you could do for him. Embracing what God does for us is the best thing that we can do. Saying, God, I don't know all of the answers. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know what your answers are sometimes, but things, go, things are going, and I trust that you are in control of what's happening around me. I trust that you are in control of what's happening in my life. And in that, there's peace. In the fact that you don't have to do it all, that you get to yield to God, there's peace and there's comfort because there is one God who loves us and is taking care of us. And when we stop trying to do everything on our own and we yield, we yield the programs that we have at the church, we, we yield our own personal lives and we say, I'm not in control of this, but I worship and I serve the one who is. And we get to relax because we're not in control of the universe anymore. We're given over control back to the one who actually is in control of the universe. I'm going to pray for this and then we're going to go out into the new year. Thank you guys for being here this morning. Let me, let's pray. Dear God, we come before you with praise. We come before you repentance, saying, God, I don't do, I've got stuff in my life and you love me anyways. I'm turning it over to you. Take it. And then we come back, come to you with our, with our requests. God, these are the things we've got planned. This is the stuff I've got planned in my own life. Remove the things that aren't from you. Put in the stuff that is and guide me. Keep me every day. My everyday, ordinary life, take it. You can have it because of who you are and what you've done. The season that we just celebrated, God, everything that you are, we praise you for it. And we thank you. Dear God, we, we as a church yield all of the stuff that we want to do this year, this year. Dear God, we make room for you to work. And we truly mean it when we say the stuff that we've got planned. If you don't want it, then we'll, we'll, we'll take it out. If you, we haven't planned something that you want, then put it in. Dear God, we are here as a church to serve you, to reach people with our own stuff maybe, but only if it's blessed by you, but ultimately with your plans, with your mission. Dear God, allow us to do that. Bless us with that, that we get to reach more people this year, that you bring more people into this church family, and that we get to, to help them or, or, or to speak into their lives only because you're in ours. Dear God, in our own families, and our own lives, God, we yield to what you want to do with us. Help, the, I mean, we're going to pray, and we're going to present our requests. Ultimately, Father, it's your will done, not ours. Thank you that that doesn't mean that we're just like, uh, that's a sign of power. It's not my will, but yours be done. God, work in our lives and guide us and lead us. It's only through you that we're going to make it anyways. We thank you so much that you love us enough to be part of our lives, to be part of our family's lives, to be part of our relationships. God, make us a light. Not only as a church, but as people. As we walk out into our walking around and our eating and our going to work, God, live, speak through us. We place our lives as an offering before you. According to your will, use us. Thank you for this opportunity. Bless this church family. Bless our families as we go out into this new, this new year. Thank you that we get to come before you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, thank you for putting up, putting up with prayer. <laughs> Have a good day. See you next week.